What is up everybody, it's Dan the Bugman here, back with another jam-packed video. Today, I'm going to be answering the number one question that I get asked as a pest control technician in my day-to-day -day stops when I'm going to customers' houses. By far, the most common question that customers ask me is, hey Dan the Bugman, are these chemicals you're spraying in my house, are they safe? And I'm gonna be answering that question for you today. So that's gonna be the main part of this video, but to go along with it, as always, I've got some really cool other things to show you guys. I'm showing you guys exactly how I bait an ant trail and how this ant trail was absolutely attacking the ant bait I put out. I'm gonna be showing you a swarming honeybee colony that came out of nowhere that we had to hire a professional beekeeper to help us get rid of. And also just a couple more fun clips that I wanted to share with you guys in this video. So without further to do, let's get into the most important question that I get asked from my customers and that is, are pest control chemicals safe? So the question, are pest control chemicals safe? Guys, that is such a broad question. I could go down a number of paths with this question, but I'm going to try to answer the most helpful answer that I think most people are wanting. First, I'm gonna break down exactly why I think these chemicals are extremely safe to be applied in your house. And then I'm gonna show you some hard facts to show why these products are safe for humans and pets and children, and really anyone that is not targeted as an insect or a little bug that these are trying to kill. So to first answer this part of the question, I'm gonna show you guys some simple math, and hopefully this will start to give you a baseline understanding of how these pest control chemicals work. I'm gonna go ahead and pop up on the screen the label of the most common insecticide general spray that we use in a customer's house. This product is called Transport, and that's just the brand name, it doesn't mean anything, but as a pest control professional, and as anyone that is applying any herbicides, insecticides, anything like that, you need to know exactly how to read the label. There is a label on every single container of these pesticides that is required to be put on there by the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, requires labels to have exactly step by step by step what to do and how to apply them and all the safety precautions. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first page of the label of this chemical that we use called transport. Below the name, the very first part has to do with safety. What happens if I get this chemical on my skin, if I inhale it, if I accidentally swallow it, or if I get it in my eyes? So that is all on the right side of the screen. And we will get to that in just a second. But on the left side of the screen, I want you guys to take a look at a couple things. Every insecticide has something called an active ingredient. The active ingredient is the compound within the chemical that is actually killing these insects. The active ingredient is the poison within the chemical. And if you look below, there are two active ingredients. The first one is acetamiprid. This compound is 5% of the total mixture in this bottle. The second chemical is bifenthrin, and this one is 6% of the total mixture. So that means 11% of whatever's in this bottle is poisonous and is meant to kill things. The other 89% of this product is other compounds that help the product work better. So these things are gonna help it last in weather. These things are gonna help it last and stick to the surface that it's applied to. This product is actually mixed with water and then it is applied to whatever surface you're trying to treat. This particular chemical is mixed for general sprays with 1.25 fluid ounces in each gallon of water. Within a gallon of water, there's gonna be 1.25 fluid ounces of the whole chemical transport. But that's not all, right? When I go into a customer's house with a gallon of mixture, I'm only going to be applying about 15% of a gallon inside a normal sized house. So let's do some quick math here and show you guys exactly how much poison I'm applying inside of a customer's home on a normal service. And go ahead and fact check me on this. I am not a mathematician, but I am pretty good at math. So here we go. And I will put this on the screen as we go over it together. Now I just mentioned that I usually apply about 15% of a gallon inside a customer's home. And that comes out to precisely 19 fluid ounces of mixture. And if you break that down to how much transport that is, that is actually just 0.18 fluid ounces of transport that I'm applying inside of a customer's home. Remember, only 11% of that 
is the active ingredient, which is the poisonous part of the chemical. So 11% of 0.18 fluid ounces is actually only 0 0.02 fluid ounces of poison that is actually inside of your home at any given moment once I do the service. If you break that down into how much poison is in this, you know, square foot of spray that I had just put down, it's gonna be less than one one hundredth of a fluid ounce of actual poison product that is in your house. I don't even have an estimate as to what less than one one hundredth of a fluid ounce of product looks like. I don't think you would even be able to see it that maybe a raindrop size would be 0 0.001 fluid ounces in just an area of your home. So with all of that being said, I hope it is clear to you as the homeowner, if you apply it correctly, the amounts of poisonous product that are inside of your house are extremely, extremely low, posing virtually zero risk to yourself. So I hope that takes a little bit of pressure off you and I hope that relaxes you a little bit to know that if everything is done correctly, it is incredibly safe and effective to treat inside of your house for just a general service. So please let me know if you have any questions about how I did the math there or what that means for you guys. But these questions are not without warrant. There are other aspects of pest control that you do need to be concerned about. For example, if we go back to the label, we can see clearly there are four areas to this first aid section that it brings up. It says if swallowed, if inhaled, if on skin or clothing, or if in your eyes. Now to me, if it's on your skin or clothing, that is far and away less of a problem than if you inhale it or if you ingest it or if you get it in your eyes. Your skin is a very protective substance and the, the first few layers of your skin, they're just dead and they're meant to protect you from all kinds of things that, that nature throws at you. I get some on my skin every day and I try to minimize that as much as possible, but I know my skin is meant to protect my body from the outside world. However, I always 100% never try to get it in my mouth or in my eyes or inhale it. The other aspects of pest control products that you do need to worry about are things like mice bait, things like fogging devices, and anything that gets in the air. If you just use a little bit of common sense when dealing with pesticides and herbicides and anything made to kill other living things, you will be totally fine. That brings me to my last and final point about pesticide safety. There's a term in the pest control industry and other industries across the country called PPE. PPE stands for personal protective equipment. That could be a number of different equipment options depending on which industry you're working in. So I promise you guys, if you just use proper PPE and read the label of any products that you are applying yourself, or if you have questions about a pest control company that is applying products in your house, they will be happy to answer them. One thing I like to mention to customers sometimes, you know, I'm filming this video. This is 2022. Humans have been around for a very long time. We've done a ton of stupid things. We've had a ton of stupid products that we've made to kill things like pests that we don't like. Human civilization is pretty good at learning from our mistakes. So in the year 2022, I would be incredibly shocked if we are just unbeknownst to ourselves doing things that are harming us. These products have been tested over and over and over again after years and years of studies. Pest control chemicals are in fact very, very safe to be around as long as they are done correctly. So let's go ahead and jump into some ants. Here's a quick lesson when applying ant bait. I have just applied a bead of ant bait right across this ant trail. Notice how I applied this bead of ant bait and I'm calling it a bead because you want to apply it in a line or just dots. Never just apply it in a big glob. That's not very much surface area. The more surface area the ants have to feed on it, the better they're gonna be able to get as many ants around it and feed on it faster. And the faster they can start feeding, the quicker it'll kill off the colony. This ant bait, I've seen it take up to like 10 days to fully kill off a colony. If it's a big colony, which this does look like a big one. I mean, there's so many. I just put this out less than a minute ago probably and there's just, you know, a thousand of them feeding on it. So that's why it works so well. If you're ever trying to get rid of ants, you must use a bait substance, some kind of bait chemical that's gonna give you the best results. If you just do a spray for ants, that's just gonna kill like as they walk over it, that's not gonna kill the colony. That's just gonna piss them off and they're just gonna run somewhere else. Are going nuts. But don't worry, they'll be dead soon. You know, sometimes my job takes me to some pretty remote places in the backwoods of Kentucky, but when you see a beautiful stream, going over the road like this. I mean, it's kind of nice. A 
Okay guys, I've never seen this before. A customer just called us and told us about a beehive that's swarming. I'm just getting here and the beekeeper that we called is just getting here to check it out also. So bad news, the traffic was very loud and we could barely hear what the beekeeper lady was saying. So here I am telling you what happened and what is going on. Basically, as the beekeeper describes it, whenever the colony gets too large for the current area they are staying, they get this biological reaction that they need to swarm. That's the common name for it. I'm sure there is a more sophisticated name for this action, but the whole colony is going to move out of their current location and look for a new home. What this beekeeper is doing, she is going to actually be transferring this whole hive of honeybees into this box you're seeing. This box is a honeycomb box and it's got little sheets where the bees can build their cells where they need to lay their eggs and then feed them and produce the larva and continue the colony. What the beekeeper is trying to do here is she is trying to find the queen bee. Now, most colonies have one queen bee, but she said that some colonies do have two or three queens, and those are the reproductive ones that lay the eggs. She's trying to convince this whole colony to, instead of swarming around this pole, to go ahead and swarm inside that box. She's gonna take this box back to her whole beehive colony, where she has dozens and dozens of different bee colonies around the same area, and she nurtures them and takes care of them and makes sure that they grow up safe and I don't really know what else she does, but it was really awesome to see this. I had seen tons of videos of bees swarming, but I have never seen them in person like this. Okay guys, it's four days since the beekeeper was here, but the people that live here called us and said they're still seeing some. So I can get much closer today because it's nice and cold, but let's get a nice close up picture of all the bees. And right now they're just hanging out. They don't really know what to do. Most of their hive has been transported away. They think there might still be a queen in there, but it's so hard to tell. But they're so docile this morning because it's so cold. They're just hanging out. That's amazing that I can get that close to bees exposed in the open like that. You don't really get anything like that very often. Well, this isn't something I see every day doing a termite treatment. <laughs> Two little piggies sitting in the shade and a puppy dog and some ducks doing their duck thing. We got the whole petting zoo out here.